Hello, Legend of the Samurai here with the Miwa EC. Uh, this is an older magnetic tumbler lock. Uh, this one in particular is designed around 14 chambers which contain a spring-biased magnetic pin. Uh, they are biased in towards the center of the plug where they sit in blind holes, and so the key has magnets embedded in the sides, uh, seven on each, and when properly aligned, uh, it repels all of the magnetic pins out away from the plug, out of the blind hole, and allows the plug to turn. Uh, these were developed back in the late 1960s, um, taking advantage of the relatively new samarium cobalt magnets, uh, but as they are purely magnetic locks, uh, they have binary tumblers. You can only have two orientations uh, for each chamber, so that's either North Pole in or North Pole out. Uh, and unfortunately, that makes them relatively easy to decode. So here is a magnet pick, uh, which has been marked on each side for the spacings on the key. Uh, the chambers are offset such that the pins don't fall into uh, the wrong holes, as uh, while they have 14 chambers, they are almost never fully populated. It's much more common to find between 5 and 7 pins in place. Uh, so these are just marked for the right side of the key in red, positions you know, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then on the left side of the key in blue, positions 1, 2, 3, and so on. So without any prior knowledge of the key other than the spacings, uh, you can go in and listen for rattling, so we're using a north pole, and rattling means you're repelling a magnet. So if we go in with the south pole, we can find that the pick sticks at position 4, 5, and 7 on that side, and it doesn't stick anywhere else that I can feel, so it's likely that there are three tumblers on that side, uh, all of them requiring the north pole. And then if we check the other side, we have rattling in position one, so we'll switch to the other pole, and indeed the pick does yeah, that wants to stick right in chamber one, and so that's on the north pole, so that'll be a south magnet. Uh, we have rattling, and we stick at position 3, so that'll be a north pole, and then rattling in the back, and we stick at position 7. So that's north poles in 4, 5, and 7 on the left, and south poles in 1 and 7 on the right, North Pole in 3, so we can write down a little cheat sheet, uh, and then if we want to check from the key, uh, we can use viewing film to see where magnets are installed, and so indeed we have 1, 3, 7, 4, 5, 7, and then if we want to check polarities, so we should have South Pole there, We're getting repelled from the third spot, that's North Pole there, and then south pole there, so we got that side right, and then on the other side, 7, 5, and 4. Uh, all the other spots are dummies, so that's all it takes to decode one of these. You could then make a build-up key uh, if you wanted, but you don't need to. You can, in fact, uh, just pick these one magnet at a time. So put this in a vise, and then because these are Pretty small elements. Uh, we'll again be using a little amp setup, uh, this time with the volume cranked much higher, so hopefully that'll come through. Turn that on. So, just use a little shutter tensioner because we don't need any significant tension. And then we'll go through. Uh, we can be armed with our cheat sheet or not. And so we have rattling on that side, which means we're not binding yet. Check the other side. And anytime we find something binding, we just hold the magnet at the position 
back off until we hear a click, and then continue. So we'll check seven. All right, I think that's good. Okay, there's the good rattle. Set on that side. And open. All right, so. Turn our amp off. Now, gutting this is not like most other locks, so just we will lock it back up. And bring in a tray. So, uh, there are two free-floating Bibles, uh, one on either side, that are holding the pins. And because the chambers are offset from each other, there are these little indents, uh, one on the back and one on the front, on opposite sides, that hold the Bibles at those offsets. Uh, and so, if we undo our retaining clip, So one thing that I will need to explain about this lock in particular is the presence of this little shim. Uh, so let me gut the left side of this lock, and then I will show why that was there and how it was allowing the lock to function properly, because uh, it wasn't originally when I received it. Uh, so the easiest way I found to gut these is to insert the key, turn it a bit, and then our retainer spring, tap out one of these Bibles a little bit, and so here is one of the pins. So they're all spooled magnets. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now the most dangerous part about this are these springs. This is the finest, smallest spring I have ever seen. Uh, I cannot even reliably feel when I am holding one in my fingertips, so I would not attempt to handle them with anything but tweezers. There's another one. And another spring. third pin on that side. And of course, being magnetic, they like to stick to each other. And then the rest of the Bible just slides out. A uh, little insert piece. So now, uh, here is why that shim was in place. If I relock this with the lock facing 
down and let the key come out. If I replace this cap and hold it in, and then I insert the key and withdraw it, it didn't relock, which is an odd behavior. So now if I do the same thing and replace that shim, what that's doing is it's applying a little bit of spring pressure uh, to keep that Bible slid forwards because this little pressed feature there isn't quite deep enough. So now holding that in place, so we are in fact locked up. We'll now insert the key, and now we are again still locked up. So that's sort of a design flaw here uh, in that it's relying on a pressed feature, uh, just a little sheet metal part, to keep the Bible from shifting. So when you put the key in, it's repelling all of the magnets. Uh, and if it has anywhere to go, it will. And if it moves at all, it will no longer line up with the pin chambers. And then it will not relock itself. Now we'll take out that side. So, pin in seven Along with its minuscule spring. three, and the last one. So here's the other Bible. Uh, for whatever reason, they are shaped slightly differently, but there's not actually anything in the broaching that would interface with that. Uh, so as for the rest of the plug, we have this little leaf spring down here. Uh, this is acting both to center uh, the plug, so there's, if you turn the cylinder, uh, it's biased out slightly, and then if you recenter it, uh, there's a little flat milled there, so that's a recentering force. Uh, it also acts a little bit like a plug retainer, but only in the neutral position. So if we turn this slightly, we can slide the plug out, and this front plate will come off with it. And then in the plug itself, we have a ball bearing uh, that goes into that dimple on the key, acts as key retention. Uh, it is possible for plugs to have multiple holes and multiple ball bearings uh, for key control. This one only has the one. And then here are the blind holes on either side, slightly offset. There's nothing at all inside the plug except for that through hole uh, for the bearing. And then here we have that little leaf spring, and then broached out two holes for the Bibles. Uh, and then on the front there's an anti-drill bearing there. I believe this is a deadbolt cylinder, because uh, only this hole is threaded, and so it has the drill protection. I assume there would be more drill protection somewhere in here, but I don't have the top level faceplate for it. But there we go, that is the Miwa EC. Before I forget, we'll go close on our pins. 
six of them in this lock, uh, which is pretty common for these. Uh, you won't see higher numbers unless you have a more restricted lock from higher levels of large master key systems. Uh, so because of the way these are done, they can only do positional master keying. Uh, there's not multiple biddings uh, per position, you just have the two. And I think in large part this was phased out uh, partly because of the very small number of differs it actually has. So in binary tumblers, uh, the number of differs is two, the number of options raised to the power of the number of positions. So even if you had all 14 elements in here, two to the 14th is only just over 16,000 differs across every possible lock, you know, that's been produced. So these were widely used. Uh, and in order to get more differs, uh, this was replaced mostly with the uh, 3800, which switched to a different kind of magnetic slider and uh, added four pin tumblers as well uh, for additional master keying possibilities. But these are interesting old locks. Uh, they're all over the used market, so they're not too hard to get a hold of. And they can be picked with, you know, an amp, some tension, and a magnet. So. Oh, and I suppose I should show uh, that these are, in fact, indeed all tiny magnets. Two. Three. Four. Five and six. Uh, it's okay if you end up scrambling these, you can always check the polarities. Uh, have some kind of marked magnet for doing that, and you want to double check before you actually put them back in. Virtually every single time I've reassembled this, uh, I have had to take it apart by shimming from the back again because one of these has flipped around in the reassembly. So use caution there, uh, but they can be shimmed open from the back and in all likelihood, you'll only have one or two out of place, so you can put the key in, shim the other side, and then have it apart. Uh, or you can remove the little leaf spring and pull the whole thing out uh, from the front, Bibles included, because there's nothing to retain them. So you can't really brick this lock, uh, which is convenient, given that it's hard to tell which way uh, these are supposed to go in. Alright, I believe that is all. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.